He's a, he's a precursor to Dr. King's movement in Atlanta. In fact, Dr. Gilbert was a Morehouse man, and so was Dr. King. But it was always a great appreciation, uh, Savannah for Dr. King, um, you know, obviously because he was a minister of the gospel, and of course the work that he did in the civil rights movement. But Savannah was ready because uh, Ralph Mark Gilbert had primed them. Dr. Ralph Mark Gilbert came to Savannah 80 years ago, full of charisma and the Bible. In a word, he was a pulpiteer, a minister of the gospel. Came to Savannah in 1939, peddling passion plays, and as I like to say in the introduction to this museum, lucky for us and fortunate for him, the pulpit at the mighty First African Baptist Church was open to him. Gilbert became head of the Savannah NAACP, which he reawakened with his energy. And then he went around the state, establishing other chapters of the NAACP. His journeys took him to some sketchy places. Well, one night, he drives up to this place to get gas, and he said, I, you know, I, I'm not gonna be able to make it without stopping here. And he said, he looked around, he told her, I don't see any colored people here. You know, and the guy asked him, you know, well, where are you coming from? And when he got out, he had on this name, in AACP, but it wasn't spelled out. So the guy, he said, the guy, she said, the guy spit out tobacco and he said, so NAACP, what does that stand for? And she said, Dr. Gilbert looked at him and said, the National Association for the Alleviation of Crippled People, and got out of there. <laughs> A man is poor not because he doesn't have money in his pocket, he's poor because he doesn't have enough vision in his head and in his heart. Perhaps Dr. Gilbert's biggest contribution was in recognizing and guiding the talents of Wesley Wallace Law, Savannah's Law, who succeeded him as head of the NAACP. And he was 26 years old when he became the head of the NAACP in Savannah. Mr. Law was a postman by occupation, but through his books and music, he expanded his world and the possibilities for Savannah. When he walked this community, he was learning, he was teaching as well as he was learning. As the civil rights movement began to take shape, Mr. Law, Mayor Malcolm McLean, Judge Eugene Gadsden, and a handful of others became the architects of peaceful, methodical desegregation in Savannah, a rarity for cities in the Deep South. Mr. Law was our connection to the past and the present and, the, and even to the future because I don't want his name to be forgotten. As physical legacy, W.W. Law established the King Tisdale Cottage, the Beach Institute, and the Civil Rights Museum that bears not his name, but that of his mentor, Dr. Ralph Mark Gilbert. Why is it appropriate for this building to be named for him? Well, it's appropriate because Savannah Law said so. Wesley Wallace Law, 